Psalm 75 and 8 say, For in the hand of the Lord there's a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poured out the same, but the dregs are off. All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. You're going to taste his wrath and his indignation because you refuse to let him taste it for you. All of those who reject the saving sacrifice of Jesus Christ will surely have their part in the lake of fire which burned with fire and brimstone. The fearful, unbelieving, the abominable. You know what that is? Homosexuals. Those that have incest. Sex with your cousins. Women lay with women. Men having sex with men. You busting hell wide open. Women wearing things pertaining to a man. Man wearing women clothing. He said it was an abomination for a man to wear. Anything pertaining to a woman. He just said the abominable. It's an abomination to lay with your cousin. Abomination to mess with your nieces. Y'all have to like me, but I know what God said. Because God is saying tonight, he said, if you are fearful, the Lord said, if you are uh, abominable, the Lord said, if you are unbelieving, he said, if you're a murderer, if you're a whoremonger, if you're a liar, if you're an idolater, the Lord told me to ask you, when did it stop? When did your, when did your molestation stop? Yeah, that's quiet over here. Y'all right, y'all right back here? When did your line to the Holy Ghost stop? What day you got delivered from it? What day, what, what day on the calendar God got you delivered? Because if you can't find no date, you still got it. When did God deliver you from homosexuality? What date? What, 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 what time? If you can't find no date, you still got it. If you die, you're going to hell like it. If you die as an abominable man, if you die unbelieving, you're going to be an unbeliever forever. You die as an adulterer, forever an adulterer. You're forever a murderer. You go as you are. When did it stop? Y'all all right? When did you get delivered from that? When did you get delivered from being a predator? Why is it called so quiet? On me. Come on, man. Uh. He said, I tried to end it for you on the cross. I became that curse for you on the cross. But you still cursed with it. Not because of me, because there's something in you like it. Boy, they don't like me tonight, boy. You're going to go home dreaming about this word tonight. Don't you know? Can I give you a word? Thank you, Holy Ghost. These folks have sat in services and heard about hell and died when they left. They said, right in these kind of services, heard the word, didn't do nothing about it, but died that same day. And went to the place that they heard about. When did you stop lying? Y'all getting tired? It's not 9 o'clock yet. When did you stop lying? The Lord said, if you can't find the date to your deliverance. God said, every, undel every undated deliverance is an undated deliverance to hell. If you can't find the day you stop it, don't look crazy if you die and go to hell for it. When did you repent of that? When did you give it up? When did you walk away from it? See, folks want a doctor. They don't want a preacher. 
let me tell you something. By the time you get done getting treatment from a doctor, the Jesus would have came and gone. He said, I need you to walk, go and sin no more. Come out that stuff and go and sin no more. The reason why God's so serious about hell, because of his son. He took this for us. And you mean he bruised them for nothing? He, he looking at folks in hell, he bruised for nothing for you. Because you didn't receive it. It was, I mean, it was done for you, but you rejected it. It was an offer. You refused. Quiet on me tonight. But I, I, you know what I'm feeling God is doing right now? God saying, I'm emptying you out. Said empty it out. Tell them. Ain't nobody worth you going to hell over. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody worth you going to hell over. I wouldn't come to church like this and be that bound like that. I'm come, y'all got y'all quiet. I can't get no help, y'all. I wouldn't come to a church like this and be bound like that. It's created for people. Hell was created for people. That built a life that rejected God and his offer of salvation. You can't tell me you received Jesus, but you in sin. It's no, y'all got quiet on me. It's quiet, Brother Phil. I, I'm trying to get done with I'm about done. I'm serious. I, he said the flames don't end. If, you can't put them out. I mean, it's no end, first lady. When you're in hell, there's no end. Hell. Hell is one thing. The lake is another. You can locate hell, but you can't, lo you can't locate the lake of fire. Hell is at the bottom of the earth. But no man have found the lake of fire yet. That's a place no man know where it's at. You're going to get one break from hell is when he pull you out of it to judge you to cash into the lake. You're going to get one. Listen, the flame. See, at that point, when you stand before God, it's going to be worse than the flames. You're going to wish he'd throw you back in the flames. When you stand before God, he reads your sentence. You can't run. The angel's going to catch you. Where are you going to run? When you stand before God. There's people in the sea that can't find them. I'm going to find them, said the Lord. I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to stand them before me. I'm going to take them out their waiting place. I'm going to supernaturally cause their bodies to connect again with their spirit. Because no man can stand before him in, with dirt without that incorruptible body. You can't stand before him naked. You got to be clothed. There's people in hell now waiting to be judged. Being tormented. By the flame. And let me tell you another thing that's tormenting them. The thought. Had I just changed. Had I just obeyed God. Had I just received him. Had I just came out of sin. I would be here tonight. You, you look in that hell. You ain't going to have no clock. Because you out of time. It's outside of time. It's outside of time. And folks be like, well, he just died yesterday and went to hell, but my brother been in hell for 400 years. They been in there at the same time. Well, folks, they been in there since the 1800s. But he just died yesterday. They been in there at the same time. Because ain't no clock there. They sure in an equal amount of eternity. Because it would be unjust for you to be there longer than me. No, we got the same, we got the same experience. We try to wonder one day with the Lord is a thousand years. See, we, we can't understand this. 
They've been in heaven for 400 years, but I just got there. We've been there at the same time. Because once I entered there, time is off. No more time. No more clocks. We was there the same. We've been there the same amount. There's no earth rotating around its, its axis. There's no sun coming up on one side of the earth, and then when it go down, it comes up on the other side. No, we've been there at the same time. I'm going to show you something. In hell, you suffer the same time and the same experience. But in the lake of fire, you got degrees. Because a liar should have his part. The murderer should have their part. The abominable should have their part. The whoremonger should have their part. The idolater should have their part. But notice in hell, there's no part. In hell, is suffering, waiting for their part. Waiting for their part. And you will not go to hell without a part. See, those parts that I'm naming should have been put on him and taken off of you. Your adultery should have been taken off you. If you was an adulterer before you got saved, when he saved you, he took it off you. Right? When you got saved, you came to the cross, he became you. You became him. I became the curse, you became the blessed. When I was on the cross, I brought you to me. I reconciled you to me. I brought you to me to get to the door. When you walk through the door, he took it off you. Now, God said, I don't see you like that no more. I took it from you. You're saved. You're sanctified. But you rejected him. That wrath is still on you. Let me tell you the major reason why people go to hell first day. Y'all, it's not just adultery. You ain't just, the major reason why you went to hell is not adultery, not lying, not killing, not murder. The major reason you went to hell was because of rejecting Jesus Christ. And as a result of je- rejecting him, you murdered. As a result of je- rejecting him, you commit adultery. As a result of rejecting him, you an abomination, sins, and, and, and whoremongering, and, and, and lesbianism, and homosexuality. Those are results. Of rejecting him. What are you rejecting? You're rejecting him to take that off you. You're rejecting the free offer. How do I get saved? He told the jailer. The jailer asked the, uh, uh, Peter uh, uh, and asked Paul and Silas, oh, What must I do to be saved? He said, Believe in the Lord Jesus. You and your household shall be saved. I got to accept what he done for me. That's my ticket. That's my way in. That's my way out. If I believe it with all my heart. To the saving of my soul, I'll be living from a, a burning hell. But I can't say I believe it. And I'm practicing sin. You've taken the grace of God in vain. The Lord said, Time out. Listen, every time you walk down to an altar and then went back, we went back home the same. God, I'm recording that. Why are you coming up here and getting, you ain't getting nothing? You know what God is doing this hour, first lady? He said, I'm putting responsibility on you. Stop blaming everything on demons. Be honest. I'm doing this because I like it. Deliver me, God, from the like of it. Come on, somebody. That's, the, the, the devil ain't got nothing to do with that. You're giving it to him. He only take what you give him. See, you don't do what you don't like. You do what you love. You in that sin because someone you love it. You got to ask the Lord, take away my love for it. Because I know it's wrong. But I can't stop because it gives me pleasure. All them folks that said I couldn't stop. Y'all just don't know how hard it was. I had a struggle. I couldn't stop. They're down right now. 
They got control now. Can't anybody commit an adultery in hell? And they die without, some of them die without the Holy Ghost. They ain't committing no adultery now. Ain't nobody lying in hell? Why are you going to lie for? Ain't going to help you? Ain't nobody committing fornication. Ain't nobody murdering nobody. They are in hell because of their choice to go. I kept hearing the word last, a couple of weeks ago, divine justice. Divine justice. Hell is God's divine justice. I see why he said it now. It's divine justice. I'm getting justice. I'm getting vengeance on you. It's, it's judgment because you rejected my only means of being saved. It's going to catch up with you after a while. It's going to catch up with you. You know how many funerals I've done for folks that wasn't saved? I've done fun funerals for people I didn't know, but I knew they wasn't saved. I couldn't lie. I didn't, I didn't know them. So I had to tell them, whoever was listening, come out your sin. Preachers don't preach at their funerals no more. That's the best time to preach it. First lady, God told me, says your hunger for souls, he told me, as my hunger for souls to get, get stronger, I'm going to sing you everywhere. Because you're not hungry for money, you're hungry for souls. I need you to pull them out the flames. They go, no, you ain't coming for money, you're coming for business. See, I come to this, this, this new level that's on me. This level, I'm a, Jesus is my foundation for everything. When this is your foundation, it works deliverance. The devil can't stand this message. When it's a cross, a death, burial, and resurrection message, he can't stand it because he knows we'll be men most miserable had he not rose from the dead. We have no life to look forward to. Our faith will be in vain. My preaching will be in vain. All this coming to church will be in vain. Since it's not in vain, why are we making it in vain? He made it not to be in vain, but folks are still coming in vain. They coming in vain because they doing what they want to do. It's time to wake up. Ain't no reincarnation, baby. I'm sorry. He lied to you. I came out that kind of crap. I call it crap. It's crap. It's something you flush down and come over with other stuff. You ain't coming back here. You die. It's, it's over with. It's appointed unto man once to die. After this is the judgment. All these movie stars dying. They realizing money can't save me. Putting these folks in gold caskets. Burying them in their cars and stuff. Oh boy, 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 boy. Boy, boy, boy about that black soul. Why does they was in life? They got an old black soul now burning. And their soul is fueling the fires of hell. Every soul that go to hell, you fueling the fire. You got charcoal that's fueling it. It can't pump without souls. It needs souls. That's why it has enlarged itself. It needs souls to pump it. The souls in hell is the heartbeat of it. It can't exist without a soul. It exists because of souls. He says a fire is in my wrath. I create a fire that's burning in my wrath. It's in the Bible. It burns to the lowest hell. Hell is God's wrath. Why is this his wrath? Is this his vengeance? Why is this his vengeance? Because you, you done ill to his son by rejecting him. Can't reject Jesus and get away with it. Y'all better hear me. You better, y'all better hear me. You can't get away with rejecting him. You can talk God all day, but you got to go to Jesus first. You know, God, God, good. I love him, but have you been through Jesus to get to it? 
Because if you ain't been through him, you still in your sin. You talk God all day. Go ahead, talk God, 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 if you didn't go through Jesus, if you didn't accept him to be your Lord and Savior, what you mean Lord and Savior? Savior means he rescued you. Lord means you obey him. Huh? See, he's my Savior, but he's your Lord. Why well, call you me Lord, he said, and you do know what I say. He ain't your Lord. If you out there doing what you want to do, it's your thing. You can do what you want to do. You can't tell me who to sock it to. All right. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. But one day you got the answer. What you going to say to God when he asks you, why didn't you get delivered? Well, uh, what, what you going to say? Why you let your wife drag you just down here with her? One gonna be taken. One left in the bed, the other and taken. And you mean to tell me you're gonna be taken with her? The other way. Not that one. You're gonna go this way. You thinking you're going up when you die. Oh, oh God, I'm about to see glory. And you seeing the lights. You seeing flames. You seeing darkness. Folks have left their bodies. They thinking they're going through a tunnel to see light. But they're going through a tunnel to see flames. You ever heard of a tunnel when you die? You, you see at the end of the tunnel the light? That's an exit. That's an exit from this world to the next. You are, you're going to travel through something. You go to hell, you're going you're gonna to feel the experience going. You exiting from this life into another life that's outside of time. And as you go, you know where you're going. No, God, no. You're going. You're on your way to a flame. You can't stop it. You can't pray. You can't say, God, give me another chance. You're on your way there. And the next thing you know, bam. And you woke up in hell wondering, why am I here, God? I'm too late. Too late. Some people on their deathbed, they send the demon that's about to escort them. Y'all hear me? Why you think folks trying to, re they can't resist from going? Because they got escorted. You know they're coming for you, don't you? Death angels. They waiting for you. If you dying in sin, it's demons waiting for you. It could be some of them demons that you feel in your house. Because they know death is around. Some demons only come when death is near. Like vultures know when something's about to die. Some demons are attracted to death. They know a soul about to exit. And you wonder why you're feeling them spirits around your house. Maybe because death is around. And somebody praying that you don't die. Some people is having trouble. They tormented that night. Came and rest because them demons around. Trouble in their mind because death is after you, baby. All you got to do is repent. All you got to do is come to Jesus. Stop what you're doing to come to Jesus. That's all you got to do. But you keep playing with that stuff. Right, come on, sis. I don't like going to bed. My bed shaking. Or feel like you ever feel like you're going through the bed? Yeah. You ever feel like you're going down with? You ever felt that? You felt it before? Your bed can't stop you from going to hell. God will take your soul straight to that bed, straight down to hell. Shoo! Don't play with this stuff. When he said taking flame and vengeance, he's giving us a glimpse on the other side of life. For those that won't repent, come out your sins. You know, let me tell y'all something. He says, better in a hell with one eye than two. If that one eye offends you, it's better in the, in the hell with no eyes. If your eyes offend you.
If your hands offend you, cut them off. It's better to enter in the hell maim than enter in the hell with two bad hands. Right? You know what God just told me? Stop praying for healing in your body and your soul ain't right. Because your body being healed is going to save your soul. That's two different issues. Your soul needs saving and your body needs healing are two different things. It's quiet on me, brother. Because God healed you don't mean you're going to heaven. Because <laughs> you... Because your eyes got healed don't mean you're going to heaven. Are you delivered? Are you saved? That's the difference. Folks want healing but don't want to be delivered. It's quiet. I'm trying to get through, Lord. How's your soul tonight? Some people, God ain't going to heal because he know you're already a bug or burn now. You're already in foolishness now. If I heal you, you're really going to go 100 miles out. You're already going 60. Y'all, y'all, let me get done, brother. They already doing the stanky with bad feet. Bad knees. Still doing stuff. If I heal your legs and your arms, why you doing the stuff you doing now? You really gonna get both? <laughs> Boy, go really? Why well, need Trey here to do that stuff and stuff? That, that uh, uh, George Jefferson. That's what they're gonna be doing. Uh, Am I right? Why would why, why I heal your body and your soul undelivered? And you already a fool, halfway functioning. You got jokers in wheelchairs still robbing folks. What well, if they had legs? What, how much more would they rob you? <laughs> I watched it the first 48 hours. Lord, listen. I watched it the first 48 hours. This man couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair but driving. Sir, how'd you driving? I used the stick to press the gas and to stop the button. And then to stop, to stop, and I used the stick to go with. Caught in a murder, shooting folk. Getting away with a stick in his hand. Can't move his leg, but got a stick to drive with. Y'all. So you mean to tell me you'll trade a healing for deliverance? God said I ain't having it. Y'all quiet on me. Lord, I want all my limbs, but listen. If my limbs cause me to go to hell, and God said I gotta take them from you to get for you to get here, to get to heaven, take them. Cause when I get there, you gonna restore. God said I ain't healing some of y'all till you get saved. Shanda, till you get delivered, why would I heal you and make you a monster? They're supposed to sorry more with their broken legs than they are their soul. Let me go, man. Cause listen, let me. They, they feel more sorry about their con physical condition than their soul. Don't you know if you die, you're going to be in worse position than what you're in now? Can I get a witness back there in the left corner? Can I get some help in the back, back there? Can I get some help over here on the right side? God never heal you. What you gonna stay out of His will? You better run. You better run. Y'all heard co pastor testimony when she was living, how she was running from God, and that bullet caught her. She said she felt herself leaving her. God gave her mercy. She got that thing right. Never went back. Don't you know you could live holy and never go back? Keep yourself out of hell. Because if I have to preach a funeral, I know you living like a booger, but I ain't gonna lie for you. He or she died as a fool. Don't die like them. I ain't for the play. Don't die like them. I warned it and warned them. 
I can't preach to her I'm pro- her or him. I'm telling you, whoever listening, don't follow the same path they followed. They wouldn't listen. Boy, that's, boy, that's tough, there. Boy, that's, that's bold, but that's true. Live like a dog, die like a dog. And then you barking like a dog. You howling like a wolf. Want to get out of here or can't get out. It's over. You get that? It's over. No more Amazing Grace. No more Terminal Loose songs. Terminal, you know. Nah, no more of that. Let me be spirit. Nah, no me spiritual. Ain't none of that. Ain't no shit. No more singing that. No more sitting in these seats. No more, no more preacher preaching to you. You're on your own now. While the blood is running warm in your veins. While your tongue is not glued to the top of your mouth, it's time to repent tonight. Come on down. Listen, I'm not playing with this because he said the preacher shall receive the greater condemnation. If you have backslidden tonight, you come down to this prayer line. Forget for. See, one of the problems, first lady, is folks who want to be honest. You bring they sin up to them, they act like, no, not me. No, if it's you, uh, listen. Nobody got a heaven to hell to put you in. This dealing with the cross. You see how this relate? Now you see how hell and the cross relate? How the death, burial, resurrection relate to, with your soul? Preachers don't preach it on that level. They're just telling you you're going to hell, but why? How did I get out of it? Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. The Lord Jesus, that God rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you backslid, the Bible says, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and he's just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So the bottom line of being saved, let me tell you the bottom line, is escaping hell. That's the bottom line. I ain't getting saved to get a new car. I'm not saved to get a new house. He didn't save me to give me a new job. He saved me to my soul to escape those flames. Don't die with no flesh. You hear me? Flesh is getting folks, boy, sit to hell, boy. Flesh is on the Flesh is going to be corrupted one day. Flesh is going to decay. And I, I feel that some other people should be down here. But I, listen. Listen. That's your soul. Don't play with this. Don't play with this. Don't play with it. There's a real hell. There's a real heaven. He died for you to be with him. That's why he died to give you a way to be with him. He died to bring us to God. Why refuse it? Tonight got to be your, your night where you put this in your journal. Tonight is the night I be dedicated my life to God. And when the devil try to mess with you, you look at that. Oh, no. Tonight was the night I turned away. And my destiny changed. Hallelujah. Oh, this is y'all. Is it?